Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Nola Pududu and this is the secret life of my PhD. Today I want to share my CA journey with you. As I mentioned before, I qualified as a chartered accountant in 2009. And for as long as I can remember, I have always wanted to be a chartered accountant. I was one of those kids <laughs> when you ask them, what do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? I was like, I want to be a chartered accountant. That was me, like clearly. Uh, so I remember when I was eight or nine years old, my aunt, um, my, my mom's younger sister, she was graduating from UNISA, getting her BCom degree. And we went to her graduation. I was so excited. I still remember that time where there was my grandfather. And yeah, I was just excited, like become, become. And I was like, I'm going to do become. And I think my aunt's the one that actually planted the seed of being a chartered accountant. Because I think she's the one that said, no, you must do chartered accounting. So it was just stuck from then on that I'm going to be a chartered accountant, full stop. Fast forward to high school. I went to the Glen High School. And we could take accounting as an elective. So I took accounting and my accounting teacher in grade eight, Mrs. Sebastian, she was so amazing. You know, Mrs. Sebastian, I had this expectation of what accounting was like on the one end. And then there's the reality of what accounting is. Mrs. Sebastian managed to bring it together and there was no disappointment. I got, I was excited about accounting. Accounting was what I thought it always will be, <laughs> you know, so it never disappointed. And the way she taught it, you know, that's, I think maybe that's also, you know, one of the reasons I, I enjoy academia, I enjoy teaching, you know, the way Mrs. Sebastian taught, taught us accounting, you see the value and the importance of having teachers who really care about what they're teaching and who know how to teach, you know, it's very important. So anyway, I did accounting in high school and I really enjoyed it. And then it was time to go to university. My, mark, my marks in high school were good. I was, I was a bit naughty. You know, my marks were good. Maths was good. But I think like grade 11, oh, I became, my marks dropped. Like my marks dropped. I passed, you know, but not as well as I was used to passing. And then in, in matric, I think I worked a bit harder and yeah, so I was able to still study accounting uh, in university. So I had applied to, to an institution, but, and I got in, but at the end of the year, at the end of matric, yo, I got nervous. I just, and what made me nervous was the idea of just being at a big institution, I, I, I was just <laughs> a bit nervous, you know, I just thought, I found it so intimidating. And then I heard about, um, it was called Midway Graduate Institute at the time. They offered classes, small classes for UNISA students. So you registered with UNISA, you attended classes with them. And it was more like a bigger high school as opposed to university, you know? So I told my parents about this. At first, they were just like, this doesn't sound proper, but you know, I, I was able to convince them and they found out information about it and they got on board. So, you know, they were happy. So, okay, you're going to study accounting science, go ahead. And Junisa's degree was a creative, is a created by Psyche. So that was fine. So I studied first year guys, first year I was like, a star, eh? shining light, eh? distinctions galore. I was doing so well, um, except for one subject that I just failed. It's called computer data processing, DPA. Hated that subject, still do right now. Um, the textbook just, it, that subject just didn't make sense. The lecturer didn't make sense. Like nothing made sense with that subject. And I didn't put much effort in the subject. So anyway, but besides that, distinctions galore. I was doing so well in first year. And then having done so well at the end of the year, I applied my uh, for a bursary and um, a training contract so I could serve articles at an uh, uh, audit firm. So, I mean, I was always like, I remember, I mean, in high school, I was like, okay, I'm going to study accounting. So I already had the next step in mind. When I was in, in, in varsity, I was like, okay, where am I going to work? So I was not, I, I was always working on that next step. I remember that. So um, I applied at... PricewaterhouseCoopers. Now I have to give you context of this PricewaterhouseCoopers for me. When I was in high school, 
um you could see the building price waterhouse coopers from our school if you were standing on like the first or second floor you could see price waterhouse coopers the building there and i would say to my friends i'm going to go work there i'm going to be a partner at pwc this one time this one guy was like you know the pass rate for chartered accountants is like 30 percent i'm like when well, nah, don't worry i'm going to be in that 30 percent i was like just like so driven towards this thing so naturally when it was time to apply for bursaries and stuff pwc was the first choice you know so i applied there and i think my, in in spite of the dpa my marks were very good so they, they they offered me a contract i was excited and i signed my contract so i got into second year on a roll i was like oh i'm hot property second year ha second year showed me flames i didn't fail i didn't fail except for dpa i got a supplementary but my marks in second year were not good and i'll tell you something i I brought in a horrible work ethic into second year. Second year, I came in, I was, I thought I was, you know, I was like hot property. I just gotten my bursary and I got so many distinctions in first year. And I thought, oh, second year is going to be a cruise. And it wasn't. I had to up the game and I didn't do it. So I did pass. Look, I didn't do badly, but compared to what I'd done in first year, my second year marks were really disappointing. I wasn't happy with them. So anyway, by the time I got to third year, you know, I was like serious, focused and I got the, you know, the results that I wanted for third year. I did very well in third year and I was really proud of myself. So I finished my degree. I did it in, uh, with UNISA, attending classes at MGI. And then it was time for honors, uh, CTA. For CTA, I went, honors CTA, I went to classes at FLB. They're called Forbes Lever Baker. They were offering that same concept of UNISA classes, but you wrote, you had a UNISA degree. So I went to FLB and wow, okay. The gap between third year and cta honors it was on another level you know in third year i had really worked on my work ethic i was a hard working focused diligent student and i brought that you know good work ethic into cta but yo it was just not coming together cta was tough and i i had to up the game i i worked harder i, I remember i would what i would do was i would um I was living very close to the the classes where we could attend classes so i would leave my apartment early in the morning it was in a secured area and then by four o'clock most of the days i was in the lecture hall and i was just studying some days the studying was like very not productive but i just tried to keep that habit i broke that habit over a period of time and then i went back at it and continued to do that so i did have to up the game in cta but it did work you know i was able to um pass and get my degree and i got i mean i got a good pass i got my degree so cta done i was on my way to pwc to serve articles guys i was living the dream i was so excited you know i was 21 and i'm going to my first job at my dream company i remember a few days before my mom bought me shoes from aldo guys aldo two pairs of heels from aldo and then we also stocked up on some suits from identity you know so i was like good to go i was so excited got to pwc and yeah pwc or not pwc per se articles articles love hate relationship with articles that's it for me you know i've never cried as much as i did in articles it was tough and when i say cry i mean go to the bathroom and you're crying at work it was tough um it was it, it stretched me there was never a comfort zone um you're reporting articles at an audit firm at, at least at when i was serving articles you would be reporting to different managers at any given point in time you could be you know working on different assignments different engagements clients at any different point in time and you were always learning you never got to a point where you're like i know this i can do this there's always a stretch so look it's good for character development but you know sometimes you just don't want your character to be developed <laughs> it was yeah it was tough it was tough but i'm so glad that i did it because yo um i I know, I know what I'm good at. I know my job. Like you cannot tell me that I don't know my work, you know? So the training was brilliant. I have to say as painful as it was while serving articles, 
you write two exams. The first exam you write in the beginning of your first year of articles. Ne? That exam, uh, it was called the board exam, I don't know, whatever, board exam. So that exam is basic, it's, it's mainly based on what you did at CTA honors level. So you write that exam. Now, at the time, Eunice's pass rate for this exam was not very good. I think it was around 30%. Ooh, I was so I, I was so angry at myself. I was like, but why did I do this? Why did I pick an institution where the pass rate is so low? Like I'm it's like I'm working against myself, you know. I mean, you had people from UCT and University of Pretoria and Vets, and you know, the pass rates are 90, 99%. And here I come from UNISA and the pass rate is so bad. So already I had this thing like, okay, I'm fighting a pass rate, you know? So that was really tough for me to get around mentally. And look, I worked, I didn't want to fail. I worked hard for that exam and I, I prayed just as hard as I worked, you know, but I passed that exam. I passed the exam. Now at the time, so it was that one exam that you wrote and then later on you wrote an exam at the end of year two. And at the time, once you passed that first exam, it was like, ah, it was almost a given, like you're going to be a CA. This is it. Cause that ex second exam, the pass rate was high just generally, you know? So the tough one was this first one, you know? So, ah, after I passed that, good, I was like, okay, serving articles, it's tough, but I'm going to be a chartered accountant. It's on <laughs> until I wrote my second board exam. I failed it. I failed my second board exam. Um, failing board deserves a video on its own. One day I'll make a video. I don't think I'm ready to actually <laughs> um, uh, express and d describe what I went through when I failed. But that was tough. You know, um, that, that, was, that was tough for me. It caught me off guard. I, I didn't see it coming. I thought I was on track. And it just came in and I, I failed. And I, I had to, I had to pick myself up in 2000. I remember the results came out in 2008. I had to pick myself up. I had to figure out a way forward. I couldn't allow myself to shrivel up and cry in defeat you know there's one thing about failing an exam when you're working an exam like this everybody knows you're writing the exam it's not like in in varsity where if you fail you know maybe your parents know your friends know whatever here yeah, everybody knew i failed the partners knew i failed my managers you're a senior at that time the juniors that report to you they know you failed everybody knows you failed the clients they know you failed just dealing with that. Yes, that was horrible. I, guys, I think it was like I need like a month where I just said to myself, I'm going to allow myself to be sad. I'm going to allow myself to not laugh at jokes, to feel sad. I just, it was a tough time. So like I said, that deserves a video on its own. But what I can say to you is that I worked damn hard in 2008. I pushed myself. I picked myself up from the ground and I was so critical of where I went wrong. I wanted to know how I missed this thing and I didn't want to miss it again. I was not going to become a statistic. And you know what? I wrote that exam again in, in 2008 in November and I passed it. And in 2009, February, 2009, I officially became a chartered accountant. My goal was to qualify as a chartered accountant at the age of 23 in the year I turned 23 and I missed it by a few months. I only, I was 23 when I qualified uh, as a chartered accountant, but it was the year that I turned um, 24. And the lesson for me, you know, the, the journey was, I must say the journey to become a chartered accountant was really somewhat smooth for me until that end. And the lesson for today, guys, my lesson, for you for today i had to take responsibility for my life i had to take agency over over my actions the decisions that i make what was happening in my life that's one thing i noticed about 2008 that i did differently i couldn't 
I couldn't blame anyone for failing. I, I couldn't blame the, 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 the firm I was working for. It didn't even matter if it was their fault because at the end of the day, I had failed. And I, the only way I was able to rise up in that year was to take responsibility for my life, take responsibility for what I want to achieve and this type of success that I want to see in my life. And that is um, one of the greatest gifts I got from that year. And it made me realize that, you know what, if I put my mind to something and I'm deliberate about working towards it, it's not easy. That's one thing I learned. It's not easy and it's not comfortable. But I have it in me to achieve my goals. That's my story. I hope you take something from it that inspires you maybe in your journey. And thank you for watching my video. I will see you guys next week. Bye.